What are the biggest trends that both of the telcos doing in this field? The green to transformation into green, to including the other ICT business as well. We need to have a governance model. That is also a good opportunity for us to issue our white paper together with TMF. What is the most innovative solution? Huawei, we have done our net live. ICT must contribute more for the vertical industries. We use 5G uh, to be business to the mining industry to make it uh, zero on the mountain. 15 people walking in the downtown city. The power price is only one fifth in the evening, so walking automatically in the evening. Hi, this is Olga Martinov. Uh, I'm a CFO and Sustainability Officer at Team Forum and uh, I'm pleased to, to be joined today by Singleton Cho, the President of Network Consulting and uh, Integration Services at Huawei. And the big theme of today's uh, session is about energy consumption and the initiatives that we have to reduce the impact and drive sustainable green networks. And um, Singleton, when we think about the opportunities this creates, what are the biggest trends that you see at the sector in terms of addressing um, this issue and uh, what are the telcos doing in this field? Notice, we just uh, noticed three or four major trends which happen in the ICT industry, okay? First of all, the industry trend, the first sure is the green, okay? Uh, everybody, telco, want to transformation into green uh, telco yeah. and also including the other ICT business as well. And the second trend is the, uh, the business growth because uh, many telcos, when they want to transformation into green, meanwhile, they want sustainable business growth that carrying their transformation, their business from to c to the new 2H and 2B business as well. They want to grow parallel with the green transformation. And the number three is the uh, trend is the experience as well. Because um, we understand that Europe, the carrier face the pressure of P3 or ocular testing. And in the other country, they have the hip index like NPS. They want the transmission of green will not uh, load down their brand in, in terms of customer experience. And the last trend uh, as well is the ICT enabling. There are a lot of operators, they want to uh, enable the other ICT, that vertical industry, use the green or the digital transformation to help the other, for example, mining import this heavy energy consuming industry to be green and digitalized. That is the four trend uh, we are noticing, and we are also noticing, and we are very eager to know that if these four trend combine together, what kind of magic or chemistry uh, transformation will happen? We are eager to see that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I love the way you are looking at it across different trends, understanding the. Um, challenges that happen in different regions as well, and you have a, a very big footprint around the globe, so working with a lot of partners and CSPs. And um, we all know that the issue of uh, green gas emissions has been on the top of the agendas of CFOs and CEOs yeah. for quite some time. The yeah. data shows that um, the energy consumption by the sector is around 3% of the global energy consumption, yeah. and the trend is upward. Of course. Uh, which is something that we need to do about it in terms of improving and bringing the energy efficiency. And I know that at Huawei, you are one of the leaders in terms of enabling that for the CSPs as well as the uh, other verticals. Um, so when we think about the opportunities this creates for, uh, for you and also for your customers in terms of uh, trying to achieve net zero, yeah. What would, uh, in your uh, perspective, be the most important? Uh, actually, that's a very good question. Um, I think uh, different country, uh, in different countries, uh, and the regulator and uh, the social de development level is different, uh, totally. And our operators or our ICT uh, partners facing different kind of pressures. For example, in Europe, we understand that the energy bill is, is going on, yes. and every year they can OPEX is going up, and uh, meanwhile, they cannot see the future is not unpredictable. They will not know how the regulatory will put the, the energy bill and the price and what is the policy, and that's the rank one. And the rank two is that uh, for some of our ICT partner in China particularly, when you do the transformation, the CEO and the CFO will care about what is the business case, how can I persuade my board that our investment and ROI is true, I want to have a digital tool and a governance model. And the number three, speaking of the governance model, 
you know, in green, in this green trend. Now we don't have a comprehensive uh, set of index. We have uh, NEE, SE, and uh, these kind of things. Uh, operately understand where is the benchmark and where is the position MI. So we need to have a governance model and need to set a complex index. But all these three are, the, are only the surface. Okay, if we put it deeply that uh, in the traditional uh, ETO model, which published by PMF, um, the green concept may be uh, not part of it in the last uh, 10 years. So in the, the left circle management, uh, green need to go online with the experience, with the cost. So we need to put it in that. But that is also a good opportunity for us to issue our white paper together with TMF and an issue a framework and an issue the API a platform, which we can work on for that. Uh -huh. I really appreciate your call for action here. Let's yeah. do it all together. Let's bring all the members together to make yeah. sure that we address the same. And I just wanted to highlight the importance, as you say, in terms of the business resilience, network resilience, and that then supports the business impact and the business case that um, can be justified to any CFO and especially with the measurable yeah. <laughs> success metrics that um, we can achieve there. And when we um, think in terms of innovation, a team forum, as you know, we're all about practical solutions. Yeah. We work a lot with the industry and with Huawei yeah. uh, and running the rapid proof of concept uh, projects like Catalyst. Huawei is participating in a lot of Catalyst this year in Copenhagen. Thank you for your support. <laughs> yes, and it's a collaboration across the industry. Mm -hmm. So from your perspective, what is the most innovative solution that you've seen um, in telco in terms of the adoption that can drive and accelerate the change towards uh, uh, more efficient networks and how that links to overall digital transformation efforts? Innovation, all has done so far is major to address the concern of, like you mentioned, the CEO and the CTO and the CFOs. Um, because uh, the network which you are talking on now is a legacy network which attracted the business from 20 years back. And meanwhile, when we do the green transformation, we need also consider in the next 10 years, for example, we are China Mobile, we need to consider where is my competitiveness in terms of network. Uh, so uh, the business on the network is so complex. And when we go into green transformation, when we face out all the equipment, they will ask us that how long you need how can, can you commit that uh, there's a zero fallback, zero network accident? Uh, so in order to do this, we need to have a digital tour to sort out all the business. And meanwhile, we need to plan in the new business, which will be carried on. But uh, they will ask us that, where are they? Can you give us uh, something in AI, in AI, which I can show by myself? So that uh, uh, Huawei, we have done a net live, we have combined six a very major digital engine inside that. For example, the perception engine, the AIGC engine. So we will show the client, for example, uh, we have one site that, uh, this site is a 5G site, and this site also is the carrier site for their home business, which connect into 1,000 homes. Wow. Well, uh, with the FTTR solution. And meanwhile, this site carry the solution under the 2B, a fixed line, private line, VPN, but a very large enterprise. So when we approach it to the client, they will ask that, if you do the green transformation, the modernization, how about my business? So we need to do the simulization for them to ensure that no service SRA will be downgraded and uh, we have more, uh, more fixed line and we will commit to them that we'll give you a new solution which can guide your network construction in the future. But they don't want it in paper. They want to see that by their own eyes it actually happened in the AI world. And uh, the operator, they have some several parameters which they can adjust by themselves and they can output the business case by themselves so they can give to the CEO and the CFO so they can make the decision. Definitely, we yeah. need to see the, the proof of it working. And I think um, we know that within the industry there are quite a lot of telcos that have um, ambitious commitments, I would say, yeah. towards 2030, 2050. Uh, and we really need to see how we get from commitments to execution, the actions, the concrete results. Um, we've just been at the uh, great lunch briefing uh, of course, session. Under your leadership. <laughs> <laughs> and with your um, brilliant um, 
introduction of the uh, green telco networks and um, the project and the framework and the call for action to actually yep. bring that standardization throughout the industry and work together with all the partners. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering for you, based on this type of discussions, what are the key takeaways from this session? What are the outcomes and what's next? Um, actually, and uh, our role is just a uh, telecom vendor in the world, and we are very small <laughs> for the whole <laughs> ICT and the green business. We are very small. Uh, we were working together closely with TMF, but I think we still call all the carriers working together with the authorities to take the responsibility and action from now. You know, the best time to plant a tree is 10 years back. Okay. The best time to grow a man is 20 years back. Right? So why not we action from now? Because now it's 2023. 20, okay, to 2050, we have another maybe 27 years to go. If we don't action from now, it's too late. So we ask and we urge that operators can action now based on their development, their strategy and the local authority regulation. And we can have a very open framework working out together and let the vendor do our business the operator do their big business. And meanwhile, we will also call a very comprehensive and uh, with a very strong leadership ministry, that is TMF. You will take the leadership, like you lead, take the leading of the industry standard last 20 years back. We need some standard for green and we can action together under your leadership. <laughs> That's great. I really appreciate the push for getting everybody. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a big problem that we address, actually, and yeah. we need to act fast. But with that, we need to make sure that we bring the entire industry together, those who are leaders and those who are leggers, regardless of the level of maturity, to actually drive the change, collaborate and co-create. Yeah. We do it really well uh, at Team Forum by bringing all the yeah. um, key players from the industry to accelerate the change. And I think you work with a lot of customers just during that um, lunch briefing. Uh, we've heard great stories and use cases. Maybe there are any kind of examples of the, those practical, successful use cases and stories that um, can be leveraged for the driving the green, low-carbon networks. Uh, I want to set only one uh, example, which I myself participated in. Uh, you know, uh, in China particularly, the whole IT industry, um, although uh, we have around uh, over 2 million 5G base station and uh, the DC sun is going on. The whole ICT uh, power consumption or emission only 4% of uh, the whole nationwide. So the heavy uh, carbon emission industry vertical like mining, like uh, steel, okay, uh, they are requiring that ICT must contribute more for the vertical industries. So uh, Huawei together with China Mobile, we put our uh, digital transformation, we use 5G uh, to be business to the mining industry and that mine is around 4,000 meters in altitude and uh, around 50% working on that. The consumption is very high and uh, we try our digital solution, make it uh, zero on the mountain. So around still 10 or 4, 15 people working in the downtown city so that we can save a lot of energy consuming. And uh, you know, meanwhile, the Power price is only one fifth in the evening, so because it's autonomous, so the system can work automatically in the evening, so we can save a lot of energy bill as well for the company. So that is what uh, the country ask ICT, China Mobile, Huawei, we can contribute more to the other require enabling. We also have the same index like a VEI in our index system. Definitely, this is a great example. Uh, I think you work across many different uh, verticals and industries in terms of the enablement, and we all know that data shows that actually CSPs and the partners, the entire value well, chain, need to address yeah. that because the challenge is uh, too big to be solved just by one company or one industry, and the multiply effect that it creates on the value chain, on the other verticals, and the end users is huge. So it's great to see such uh, uh, great use cases that you're doing for mining and, um, and beyond. Yeah. Um, I think it's been great and insightful Thank <laughs> you. conversation. Thank you for that, Singleton. I Thank hope you. that you enjoyed the rest of the uh, week here at the DTW and uh, pleasure speaking to you today.
I'm leaving for Shanghai tonight. Ah. I'm sorry for that. I wish, I, miss you very, you. <laughs> I wish you a very smooth uh, trip. And I think it's not the last time that we talk. So we'll continue this conversation together with all the partners and customers. Of course. We'll Great. follow your leadership. Great. Thank you, Singleton. <laughs> Thank you very much, Olga. Thank you.